Okay, today uh, we're going to graph the basic tangent function. And here's our old friend, the unit circle. And remember how this works, that if I uh, take a ray from the origin to the outside of the circle, it will create an angle theta where this ray is the um, terminal side and the x-axis is the initial side. The cosine of this theta is the x value on the unit circle and the sine of theta is the y value and y over x is the tangent of this uh, theta. And I've got some uh, multiples of 90 here because I didn't want to crowd it all up and of course all of them are positive here, only the sine is positive here. What is it? All students take calculus, only the tangent is positive here and only the cosine is positive in that quadrant. So I go over here and I'm, I'm, I'm all set to, um, to graph the tangent. And I say, well, of course the tangent, I probably should talk a little bit about the, what the tangent is. It's the sine over the cosine, isn't it? And wherever this sine is zero, which would be at uh, zero and pi for sure, then this, then this cosine will be either one or negative one. So all the tangent will be zero. Zero over any number, of course, is zero. So I look at this thing and I say, oh, well, look, here it, here it is. Here's the order triple, right? This is the tangent of zero at zero. So I put zero here. And then as I angle pi, it's also zero right here. Now, an interesting thing, oh, and of course, negative pi, it's zero. So I'm going to get it back here. So here are three points on the tangent graph right here, negative pi, zero, and pi. Um, the other thing that happens is, is that when the cosine is zero, the sine will be uh, negative one or one. So as the cosine gets closer to zero, the thing blows up, it's undefined, and we have a vertical asymptote, just like in the function y equals one over x. So wherever the uh, cosine is zero, of course, would be pi over two, we're going to have this vertical asymptote. Okay, and at three pi over two, notice the cosine is zero, so we're going to have a vertical asymptote there. And um, at, uh, let's see, at negative pi over two, the cosine is zero, and causing uh, an undefined uh, value there for the tangent, there is undefined. And then at uh, negative three pi over two, the cosine is zero, and the tangent is undefined. And so we have this set up like this. So here's what we know. We know this is zero, and we know that we either have to go to infinity this way or infinity this way. And make this a little more uh, vertical. And so I look, well, it's from zero to pi over two, and of course, all the uh, trig functions, uh, sine, cosine, and tangent, are positive in that uh, first quadrant. So that means the numbers are above the theta axis here. So it has to go here, because I can't have any negative numbers, and I have to go to infinity. All right? And then I go over here, and between pi over 2 and pi, uh, only the sine is positive. So it has to be negative. So if, I, if I'm thinking of going this way, I have to be negative, because all the tangent values are below the theta axis here, because they're all negative. And then between uh, pi and 3 pi over 2, the tangent is positive, so it has to go like this. If I go backwards from 0 to negative pi over 2, I have to, I'm in negative territory because only the cosine is positive, so it has to go in, to infinity this way. And if we keep going on in this manner, we get this branch here, and we'll get this branch here. Well, what happens is we have these branches which are repeated. There's another one here also, and it goes on like this. And we do everything the tangent's going to do from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So we say the period of the tangent is pi. Period equals pi units. I go over here and I can talk about the domain now. It's, it's uh, oh, well, let me, let me just for the fun of it, let's just call this, we can call these uh, anything we like. So I'm going to change this to x, not to be confused with the x and y over here. I'll call this y, and now we're looking at y equals tangent of x, and I can talk a little bit about um, the domain. It's going to be x's, all x's that are real, except what? Uh, pi over 2 uh, plus n times pi. So if I take pi over 2 and multiply it n, where n is an integer, positive or negative integer, uh, it will, we add pi to it, and it's going to repeat these vertical asymptotes every pi So x is units. not equal to those values. No, I'm sorry, thank you very much. Can I, I didn't write that, did I? Where can I put that? x is not equal. I said except, but I didn't really write. x cannot equal pi over 2 plus n times pi. And my range, of course, I go down to negative infinity here and up to positive infinity there many times. So this is my range, negative infinity 
to positive infinity. Okay? Now, if we go over here, we look at the cotangent, it's a very similar situation. Uh, what we have here is um, <coughs> cotan is um, cosine over sine, and wherever that's uh, the cosine is zero, and the sine will either be negative one or one, what we'll have is a zero point. So at pi over two, the cosine is zero, so that gives us zero point. Uh, at pi, the sine is zero and the cosine is negative one, so we have a vertical asymptote here. Same kind of thing, only just in different places. And at three pi over two, um, our cosine is zero, right? And our sine is negative one, so that means a zero over negative one, which gives us a zero point. At two pi, what do we have there? We have um, the cosine is one, but the sine is zero, so it's undefined, giving us a vertical asymptote. So this is gonna look a lot like the tangent moved over and maybe uh, flipped over is what I think it's gonna happen. At zero, of course, when theta is zero, this is going to be 1, but this is going to be 0, so it's undefined, which causes the vertical asymptote. And the vertical asymptote is going to repeat every pi units, just like the tangent. So we're going to get this. And then, of course, so is the uh, 0 point, negative pi over 2. Um, the cosine is 0, and the sine is negative 1, so, so we have a 0 point. We also have a 0 point in negative 3 pi over 2. Every pi units, everything repeats. Now between here and here, this is from zero to pi over two, the cotangent is positive because they're all positive there. So it's got to go up the asymptote this way and between pi over two and pi, the cosine is negative so it goes like this. And this is our central branch, okay? This is the uh, central graph of this uh, function and this is going to repeat over and over again just like the um, tangent did, like this. And I advise you to put in your calculator, take a look, and you'll see these branches appear like this. And the period is pi, so we say a period equals pi units. We can call this x now, and we can call this y. And what we've graphed here is y equals cotangent of x, okay? And if I'm interested in the domain, uh, it would be um, x uh, belongs to uh, all the real numbers, uh, but x cannot equal what? x cannot equal uh, 0, uh, actually it can't equal n pi. Okay, so it can't equal 2 pi, 5 pi, negative 20 pi, anything where n is an integer. And my range is going to be just like the uh, uh, tangent in that it's going to go from negative infinity all the way to infinity. Okay, so it's very much, all we have to do is take the tangent, flip it upside down, and move it over pi over two, and we have the cotangent. And we could actually write it that way, as a matter of fact. Okay, that's it.